Firstly, we're going to start by amending the packet settings to suit our subassembly. We'll begin by giving the subassembly a suitable name, in this case, Example Embankment. Note the name must not contain any spaces or special characters. Next, we can add a description to further identify what the subassembly is and aid others in determining its use. An additional help file on how to operate the subassembly can be linked if required. Finally, we can attach an image to represent what the subassembly looks like. To ensure the subassembly operates how we would like it to in a model, we need to populate the Input Output Parameters tab. Firstly, select the default side the subassembly shall be inserted. Now we can add to the parameters that control the size of the embankment. We shall begin by adding the crest widths either side of the alignment. We can add a default value to create a graphical representation in the subassembly composer. This will be amendable once inserted into a model. Following the crest widths, we're going to include a slope parameter for both sides of the embankment. This will allow us to control the gradient of the side slopes once in the model. The next step is to add any target parameters in both the vertical and horizontal planes. For this example, our embankment is to target an existing surface. For design purposes, we can apply a preview value to the surface for a realistic graphical representation within the subassembly composer. We are also going to add two offset parameters to, so the crest of the embankment may have varying widths. Now we've set our input, output and target parameters, we can start to build the subassembly. From the toolbox, we're going to add a point to mark the origin. This point shall follow the alignment and profile assigned to the corridor. From here, we're going to add two more points from the toolbox representing the edges of the embankment crest. We're going to use the slope and delta x tool in order to create these points. This allows us to apply an offset target to override the width of the crest. We're going to keep the crest slope horizontal and apply our input parameters as previously created. Assigning a point code allows us to change the feature line style of the corridor once inserted into a model. We shall repeat the process for the left hand side of the crest. Now that we've created the crest points, we can add the points representing the toe of the embankment. To do this, add a point from the toolbox. This time, we shall use the slope to surface tool. For the slope, we shall use our input parameters we created earlier. Selecting our existing surface as the target.
Like the crest points, it is worthwhile applying a suitable name. We shall repeat the process for the left toe. Our final step is to add a surface link to close out the embankment shape. To do this, drag and drop the surface link from the toolbox. Select the target surface as our existing surface parameter. We are also going to add a depth, I shall explain why in a moment. We now need to assign a length to our surface length using the two embankment toes as our extents. Our surface length has now appeared. The reason we added a depth to the surface length was to demonstrate that we need to fully close out the shape using two lengths. Drag and drop a length from the toolbox and assign the start and end points. Repeat this for both of the embankment toes. We can remove the depth of the surface link as we have now closed out the polygon. Finally, we need to add a shape from the toolbox to represent the embankment material. Assign a name like we did with the points so it is identifiable within Civil 3D. Then, simply add all the links to create the shape. And there we have it, embankment models made easy by using the subassembly composer. Thanks for watching.